and press connect. And there we go. I now have access to my PlayStation 5 folder that is on my computer through my PlayStation 4, which I think that is very cool. Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So there is a brand new piece of PlayStation 4 homebrew that was released just yesterday that I wanted to take a look at here today. And the title of it is just simply PS4 FTP Client. Now, before I jump into this, just let me say that right now with Goldian, you're able to turn your PlayStation 4 into an FTP server. So that's some of the built-in functionality for it. And what that means is, is that you can take an FTP client, for example, such as FileZilla on the PC, and you can connect to your PlayStation 4. What this is going to do is, is that this is just simply a client. So what you would need on your PC is you would need to be running an FTP server. Now, I can absolutely see the need for something such as this, and that's really why I just wanted to explore it a bit today. So let's just go ahead and let's just jump straight into it. And we can see that the installation is really just installing this PKG onto a FAT32 formatted USB drive, and then just running the installer. Now, there is some controls that's listed in here. So you can go to the menu with triangle. You can mark and unmark files. You can navigate around the remote list of files as well as the local list of files. The Homebrew application does have a number of multi-language support. And it says that you can modify these by going to the data slash PS4 FTP client slash config.ne and update the language setting with one of these values shown right here. Now, you can build this yourself. We won't be building it. We will be using just the pre-released package. So we're going to go over here to releases and we're going to go to the PS4 FTP client and we'll just download that to our local computer here. So what I'm gonna do with that is, is that I'm going to copy that to a USB drive, and then we will use that just in a moment. Now, one thing that we will need to do back over on our Windows computer is that we will need to set up an FTP server. Now, this is very easy, and I just wanted to show it here. So if you have at least a Windows computer, you can go ahead and turn your local hard drive into an FTP server where this client on the PlayStation 4 could connect to it. So let's go ahead and let's do that now. Okay, so if you do a search for turn Windows features on or off, then you'll get this dialog as I've got right here. Now I am running Windows 11 on this computer, but the same instructions really follow through if you were using Windows 10, for example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Internet Information Services, and we're going to place a check mark here just on FTP server, and then we're going to press OK here. OK, so it says Windows completed the requested changes, and we're just going to press close there. And so now I would just recommend going ahead and opening back up this turn Windows features on or off and just going back down to IIS and just making sure that at least with these other two options, you just go ahead and toggle them on and then press OK here. That will give us access to the Internet Manager or INET MGR, which we will use just here in just a moment. OK, and press close there. OK, and so now just do a search for Internet Information Services Manager in Windows 10 or Windows 11, and you'll be presented with this screen right here. Let's go ahead and let's right click our local computer and we're going to go to add FTP site here and we're going to give this a site name and we'll give it a content directory. Okay, and mine's just going to be pointing to all of the files that I have in my PS5 folder. 
We're going to go ahead now and press next here. And here you can do things like assign an IP address or maybe even a different port if you wanted to. You can also start the FTP site automatically, which we will leave that on. So next time our computer boots, it will automatically be booted. For SSL, I'm going to turn that completely off because we won't need that. And then we're going to press next here. On this next screen here, we have authentication and authorization here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on basic here. You can also turn on anonymous if you would like to. And then for the authorization, allow access to, and we're going to select specific users. And we'll type in a username here. And for the permissions, it's going to be read and as well as it's going to be write. So we would be able to read content from my PS5 directory in this instance, and also be able to write data back to it. So once that's complete, go ahead and press finish here. And now if you come back up to connections and you drill down into sites, then you can see right here is actually the FTP connection that we just created. And so one other thing that you will need to do is you will need to open your firewall in order to open up these ports where they're going to be accessible to the PlayStation 4 or really any other computer. Okay, so if you go to your control panel, system and security, Windows Defender Firewall, and then Allowed Apps, you will see an entry right here that says FTP Server. So we're going to go to Change Settings here, and we're going to put a check mark right in here to FTP Server. And depending on where you want to access it to, you can just go ahead and toggle on these two settings for private and for public, if that's what you would like. So now at this point, we can press OK down here at the bottom and that has been added. And so now we do need to set up that user that we just created. So back in IIS, if you recall, we just set up a user that was called mbcrump ps4. Now we gave this the permissions to read and to write. And so at this point, while it's been added in IIS, we also need to add it to our computer. So let's take a look at how to do that. So if you go to computer management and do a search and then look for local users and groups and then users, here is where you would come in and you would create a brand new user. So we'll just type in MB Crump PS4 and we'll give this a password. We will remove this check mark that they need to change their password and we'll just go ahead and put password never expires and then press create. Okay, so there is our account, MB Crump PS4. Okay, so back over on my PS4, I've got PS4 Explorer 2.0 open and I've navigated to my USB thumbstick and I'm now selecting PS4 underscore FTP client dot PKG. We're going to go ahead and install that with an L2 and an X here. And there we go, added to the downloads here, and it will be installed in just a moment. Okay, so let's go back to the main menu, and let's go ahead and open up the PS4 FTP client. Okay, and so here is the site. So you do navigate with the directional pad on the controller. I do not see any sort of mouse cursor, which you may be accustomed to. So now we need to go ahead and punch in the server IP address. And I'm gonna press done here. I'm gonna give it a username and we'll select done. And we'll punch in our password here. And it is in port 21. And we will leave that as passive and press connect. And there we go. I now have access to my PlayStation 5 folder that is on my computer through my PlayStation 4, which I think that is very cool. So let's go ahead now and maybe let's explore what it may look like to go ahead and to copy maybe a file or folder over. So I'm going to go into my data folder and I'm just going to grab one of these PNG files, I mark it with a square, and then I press the triangle button. And from here, I can select upload. 
and we are going to go on continue here. And it looks like it just uploaded. So you can press the L1 R1 to toggle between local and remote. And if I scroll down, I should see that file and right there it is. So awesome. That shows me that at least I can copy a file from my PlayStation 4 back over to my computer. But now let's take a file that we have on our computer and copy it over to our PlayStation 4. So I'm going to simply grab this app.db file here and I'm going to press the square button in order to highlight it or to mark it. And then again, I'm going to select triangle and I'm going to select download here. And we are going to do continue here as well. And as we can see, just right over here, we have our app.db. Now, there is a few other things that I think that we should totally check out before we leave this video. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at that right now. So the first one being, does it actually save the information, such as our connection settings, once we close out of this application? So let's just go ahead and let's do that. I'm going to close the application, which is PS4 FTP client. And now we're going to load it back up again. And yes, my settings are still there. So let's press connect here. And there we go. Uh, I am pleasantly surprised that they got that right because for the most part, I spend a lot of time re-entering this information over and over. So that is awesome. One other thing that I thought would be interesting to look at is, is that, again, there was additional language file support. Okay, so here is that configuration file. And as you can see right here, there is a language field. So if you wanted one of those additional languages, you would just simply come in here and you would type it. Now, one other thing that I will note here is, is that for each of the sites that you save, the username and the password is in pure text or plain text, meaning that if anybody had access to this, they would have your username, password, as well as what the IP is, as well as the port. And so just to wrap things up here, this is an amazing application. I'm really enjoying it. I hope that you were able to follow this tutorial and get this working on your own computer. With that being said, I will talk to you on the next one. Michael, out!